Not right this second, but yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Another time. <laughs> Here, I'll end the stream with this. I'll let y'all watch like this. Hold on, hero, I'll be right back. Obstacles to overcome. And they said, there's no way this will sell. But the rewards were great. If they didn't have Mega Man, I don't even know how they'd be surviving today, honestly. Learn the secrets behind his power. It's about one thing. And it's always about one thing, blasting. It's a huge cast of characters that any kid can enjoy. Everybody loves Mega Man. And meet Inafune, the man behind the Mega. Mirai and I had no idea my luck would go this well, that this character would be this great and last this long. So yes, it was a huge Bro, but surprise But I like for Zero me. better. <laughs> In 1984, a Japanese video game company named Capcom hits its stride in the arcade scene with popular hits including 1942 and Gunsmoke. Their success allows them to I'm expand it. it's all and a like young G4 artist TV. named Keiji Inafune is hired. I've always liked drawing pictures. From a long time ago, I've always wanted to be an illustrator. Just about at the time that I had graduated, video gaming companies were becoming very popular, and they had always wanted young, talented artists. And it was a good chance for me to break out, get into a company, and prove myself. So it just happened to be the right timing for me to be an illustrator. Inafune goes to work on Capcom's newest arcade game. The very, very first project I ever did was an arcade game called The Street Fighter. Yep. Then after that, when we were doing the project, they said, we're working on a new title for the nice. home consumer division, and we'd like you to participate in that. So, uh, it was at that time I joined the Mega Man project. And the hunt for the hero turns personal. A lot of the uh, character design for Mega Man is based upon some of the Japanese cartoons that I saw when I was a child. And when I was making this game, it was kind of like a going back to my roots, going back to my childhood when I designed it. It was very fun to design that character. And that character needs a name. Before it was Rockman, it was originally going to be Mikey like Kid Astro Boy, you know? or Knuckle Kid. And this yeah. is how we were doing the package. So we decided on Rockman. And in the end, it did become the state's Mega Man. Actually, it's not a rock like a stone or a pebble. Nice, not dude. Where the rock man comes from. It comes from rock and roll. There's also another character named Roll. When I first designed the character, I had rock and roll in mind. That was the back image I was going off of when I designed a lot of the artwork. For me, Rock Man, or Mega Man, has always been a game that's been designed with music in mind. Music's always been a very important part of the series. And just like Mega Man, even his creators show weakness. This is Mega Man Like, one. show him draw something else, not just Mega Man's bosses. head. <laughs> I drew with my own two hands. <laughs> when I look at it now, I think, man, I really wasn't that good, was I? If one of my character designers that work underneath me now were to bring something like this to me, I'd probably take one look and say, no way, this sucks, try again. <laughs> With the characters and story in place, it's time to rock and roll. Basically, when you think about it, there's not something in the world that is just stronger than everybody else. Almost everything has something shows Oni stronger Musha than three in the back right there. Hell yeah, that Oni Musha was a great series. Sort of like in Scissors, Rock, and Paper. Scissors will beat Paper, but yep. it loses to the Rock. Paper will beat the Rock, but it loses to the Scissors. So that's how the Mega Man weapons work. And now it's time to introduce the twist. Well, the whole idea behind Mega Man was you defeat one boss. <laughs> and then you go to the next boss by using the weapon you just gained. They also give players a new kind of freedom. The original Mega Man game was interesting because it was one of the first games that allowed you to choose what level you played first. It was a linear platform game like a lot of other platform games, but you had a lot of freedom up front to choose the path that you wanted to take through the game. With Mega Man, they were giving the player something to, to look forward to. 
an element of strategy, which most games back then really didn't have. Once the game is finished, Inafune has to face his own bosses. After we got the game done, we took it over to sales. And we said, look, we got the game done, this is what it's like. And they said, there's no way this will sell. So I was really disappointed, of course. I was like, well, I tried my best, my hardest, really, really worked hard at it, and it didn't work out. Capcom decides to release the game in Japan oh, in a limited amount. Crazy to think that. Oh, this will never everyone, sell. The game Mario catches sales. on in Japan. Capcom no decides to bring the little robot to America. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Before they cross cultures, they make a few changes. And like they say, it's what's on the inside that really counts. It had some of the worst box art in the history of video games. It doesn't look anything near the uh, Mega Man that we see today. The box art for the first Mega Man game in the U.S. was done very quickly. The president of Capcom US said to his marketing guy, you know, we need a cover done tomorrow. Yeah, Mega Man 5, I think the box art on that was uh, pretty, I think it was pretty good. So bad. I know they some some changed it like after part two or three. Looking weapon. Despite the cover, word begins to spread. And sales of Mega Man begin yeah. to gain momentum. Yeah, five the first is, Mega Man. I think six is probably the best. Word of mouth really or, caught on. I mean, with I, Mega Man. I like two. The Mega Man course, team begins to work on the six season, has good but this time, time with a little extra help. Four is okay. Three is okay. This is an illustration used yeah. in the poster, which said, "We are waiting for everyone's ideas for new enemies." Not bad. There was I a mean, one is bad. Like, one is really bad. Create robot but, monsters but, for the yeah, the original was really bad. From two, we had children participating in the R and D of the game, so you really have the game kind of created by children for children. I don't recall five touch, off the top of my head. Actually. I know six is good though. When the, the like, sequel arrives in America, where he's like in, in the rush suit and whatever. If I were to have to throw out one single Mega Man title that I really liked, I guess it would be Mega Man 2. It was probably the one game where I really, really felt that I had put in 100% of everything that I was aiming for. Out of all the games I've made, one of the best ones. I really liked it. Capcom, realizing the potential of the game, throws their weight behind the series. When we made the first Mega Man, you're always limited by memory, how much space you have on the cartridges. And we had tons of characters that we had created that we all wanted to fit in the first game that we couldn't. So all the characters that were left over, we decided to put Good old in data two. on the cartridge, man. Damn. A lot of the characters became so retro a lot nowadays. More bright and colorful. The sprites were a lot prettier in the second one. No. We were able to do a lot of things that uh, we couldn't do in the first one. The game is popular, selling more copies than the original Girl, and ensuring that the yeah. Blue Bomber will return. Mega Man and Street Fighter came out around the same time. Are responsible for, you know, Capcom. Yeah, this documentary they is on the, uh, on the on the disc for reckon. anniversary People collection. People didn't really know Capcom as a brand until I, just, you know, Mega I, Man I think I unlocked it. I don't know if I unlocked With it. With the success of two I, Mega I Man games, Capcom rushes two. to release number Mega 3. When Mega Man 1 and 2 and 3 hit, it, it was huge. I mean, they kept coming out in progression. Like, it was, you know, one after the other after the other. They, they kept coming and waste any time. They might not have known they had a hit on their hands, but once they did... Back when they were actually good. It was yeah. immediate. Mega yep. Man is on a roll, but Capcom's next move will be a frustrating one. In 1991, Nintendo releases the Super Nintendo, an updated version of their aging console system. But one character yeah. is nowhere Super to Nintendo. be seen. I think they continued to do Mega Man games for the NES because, uh, first of all, it was easy to do. It was inexpensive for them to develop additional Mega Man games. All six of the Mega Man games for the NES used the same character animation. They have different music, different backgrounds, different enemies. Yeah, that's Mega Man 5 right do, there. It's basically the same engine. They got it right the first time and they just continued to do it. They didn't want to mess with the formula. Capcom's famous for not messing with a good thing. And at the time, Mega Man 2 <laughs> had done well, outrageous were numbers and 3 did fairly well. And they figured, thing. you know, why mess with a good thing? <laughs> now they fuck up good things all the yeah, time. Yeah, like maybe the decisions are <laughs> exactly. a little weird now. <laughs> At the time, you know, the installed base Like, they fucked was, up the Metal Gear series, dude. They hella fucked up so the Metal Gear series. Dude, the, the, the newest Street Fighter, you know, everybody hates Mega it. Man. Street Fighter V? Mega Man 4 uh, there's a lot of Marvel Infinite people in that don't like Marvel Infinite either. However, many people are beginning to move on to the newer system, leaving the Blue Bomber with a shrinking fan base. <laughs> 
Mega Man 5 is released in 1992. And Mega Man 6 hits the shelves a year later with little fanfare. The future looks Hell bleak yeah. for the little robot. But in true video game style, he's about to get another life. By 1994, Capcom has quite a bit of experience making games for the Super Nintendo. They know that they will have to do more than just re-release older games on the new system. Mega Man needs a makeover. I, I guess with every system you have to have some sort of major evolution because graphically you can do so much more. And uh, the cool thing about Mega Man is he didn't go into 3D because you couldn't really quite yet. So, so instead of what Capcom did was just give 16 him a bit man, yeah, make him 16 bit colors, hell yeah. X. Using elements of the original series, Capcom's designers add new moves. And new characters to give gamers a different experience. Yeah, the Mega Man X series was very different from the originals. It still had the same type of gameplay. The character was similar but it took place in a different time frame. The Mega Man X games are harder. They're harder I and great. I tend to not like the Mega Man X series, <laughs> mainly because it's really hard. I feel like breaking my controller when I play them. They're much more serious in tone. The boss characters in the original Mega Man games are a little more comical and lighthearted and more colorful. <laughs> The Mega Man X characters are hard and metallic, and the games are, some of those games are brutally difficult. Yet the game finds its fans. So it was this really cool techno quality to Mega Man. It was really neat. Yeah, like the, all the X6 were a lot series, more the X6, bro, was fucking hard, dude. All the sprites were a lot more colorful. X6, sort of X5, X5, X4 had, like, was not hard. And, but X6 and was hard, and and all these really that game was tough. Extravagant creatures and bosses that, yeah. that you really didn't expect yeah. in the Mega Man universe, but when they make a oh, Mega well, Robot, ugh, it's excuse me, I believe it. Cool yeah, for some reason. man, fucking Mega Man's hard, period. Any of them. Mega Man X arrives All in stores them. in 1994. <laughs> but yeah, shit, they say X is harder. And Mega Man fans take notice. I, I believe it, too. I haven't beat Mega X Man's yet. Mega Man's popularity like, is on two. the rise, and Capcom releases two games only a few months apart. Mega Man X2 uh, and to, Mega Man uh, 7. X, For the first the time, Capcom allows two X, separate series to continue simultaneously, both the X it. series and the classic series. It, it got to a point where yeah. there was just a new Mega Man game coming out. Are the X year. series on the GameCube? Uh, I don't know if yeah, was the anniversary collection. On top of that, and was just continuing to buy all the Mega Man games. But the fact that there was a steady stream of games with that character in it, you know, really guaranteed that he would continue got, to be successful uh, even when the newer system They got classic out. series anniversary collection like I'm playing now. Stores less than a year like later. A, but once got, again, uh, the video game landscape is changing and Mega collection. Man will soon find himself homeless. Like uh, 1 through 6, I think. By 1997, Nintendo has retired their Super Nintendo and Sony's PlayStation is sending shockwaves through the industry. Capcom moves ahead to mark the 10th anniversary of the Blue Bomber. They decide to release Mega Man 8, an update for the classic series, for the Sega Saturn. Ready. Saturn. Fearing the competition, Sony also agrees to release the game. But they have a condition. And Sony insisted that the PlayStation version of Mega Man 8 have something different, special, additional, that the Saturn version didn't have. They ended up including a commemorative booklet that showed all the different boss characters from various Mega Man games. Just so that Sony could say, hey, the PlayStation version's got something the Saturn version doesn't have. Mega Man finally arrives on Sony's new console, but his next jump will be an unexpected one. In 1998, oh, just, uh... Capcom follows up Mega Man's arrival on the PlayStation by agreeing to Sony's demand for a new look at the little robot. If I do remember Mega Man Legends. Wait a second. Where are you going, Mega Man? That's not the right way. But the overhaul will take some work. Rockman series was originally a 2D game. The Mega Man series was originally a 2D game. That game was cool, and, uh, but it wasn't really popular. Trying to transform popular. that 2D what, game Legends? into a 3D world. Uh, How would Mega Man look as he's jumping I mean, in a 3D world? I mean, a lot of people were talking about it around. As he's firing, like, I guess, like running, <laughs> all in this 3D world. So many it different animations and movements you have to think though, about right? that uh, aren't considered in 2D. 
Because they don't exist. Mother of Command to see on. I was going to have to say there's one particular trait about the uh, Mega Man Legends series that really stands out. Have to be I always wanted to play it. Adventure. I haven't played all the way through it either. I'm okay, well, everything's all right here. I have so many games, good games, and my Man backlog in this games new to play. 3D world and have him interact uh, with everything in a believable fashion and still have all the fans think, yes, that is in fact the Mega Man that I'm used to uh, playing as. Trying to keep that image was very difficult. It's a game that utilizes 3D, a really uh, free world where you can go and do anything you really want to. It's not very linear. And with this adventurous world inside the Mega Man Legends series, we figured that there's a lot of different kinds of I think of that's action, the only boss I've Not just in destroying an enemy too. or defeating an enemy. Yeah. Well, it's a cool game. It's like I said, it was just wasn't popular. Like, I don't remember it being like all hyped up about it, you know? Other kinds of action are just, for example, yeah. walking down the road and maybe you kick a can or you shoot down a tree or something like that. You can kick the dogs so in that the Japanese release, a lot of which freedom. you can't do it in the international release. Huge whole new world and adventure. I think that's what really makes the Legends series stand also, out. Also, there's like uh, Mega this, Man uh, is definitely this magazine that they changed. It was a game. it was a porno I mean, mag. Mega Man. Man. Kicking and screaming into 3D. In the games. Japanese release, but they changed it to like a kid from the mag. And, uh, the graphics were not state of the art, but they were decent at the time. The still, many fans picked up on. It didn't sell as well as the 2D games, but it was something that at least made Sony happy. It was 3D on their platform. Boy, that new engine sure is something completely different from the old one. <laughs> Following the leap into the third dimension, Capcom begins to look for other video game genres for their star to explore. First, Capcom sets their sights on the popular world of strategy gaming with the Mega Man Battle Network series. I have that game too. Uh, actually, there was two things that were kind of problematic about Battle Network number one. First of all, there was never a game of its type before. Yeah, Battle, there was no uh, my buddy had follow, Battle Network too. Uh, no rough idea to, to go upon. If there was, I'm like halfway through that game, game and then my really Game Boy Advance got failed. stolen. But so thank goodness, blend an action game. That, that, okay. thank goodness that Along game the was not you get the in the Game Boy Advance when it got stolen. To Tony Hawk was in it. Together, in it. Just the right so I still have this one, but I don't have my Tony Hawk game. That was very difficult. That shit got stolen at school out of my backpack when I was asleep in class. How in the fuck does that really happen? An interesting variation from the type of gameplay that Mega Man is known for. Fucking dickheaded high but school Capcom punks. returns to the classic Mega Man style with the release of Mega Man Zero. Going I never, back to that style I never played play. uh, Zero. It's a lot easier no. to understand what you have to do when you go yeah, into a game like Mega that cold and you just pick up a Yeah, that was actually time. pretty good. You run to the right and you beat guys up. You shoot, you jump on platforms. People are comfortable with that. Saber. In 2003, Capcom celebrates the 15th anniversary of its beloved character and releases updates to all three of its ongoing Mega Man series. Mega Man X7. Mega Man Network Transmission. That one was alright. That Mega was actually Man Zero pretty two. decent. After 15 years as one of the most revered game characters, he shows no signs of slowing. But Mega Man is Capcom's biggest selling game series of all time. I mean, Mr. Mega Man is a very appealing is character. It? He's got just the right amount of zip and power. There are so many different Mega Mans that you're always going to see that in right? you. Mega Man's still around today is because he's one of the staples of which gaming. which Mega Man game? Well, which one? Are you talking about the Zero or the, uh, the Battle Network? Them damn things until he dies. <laughs> I don't know. He is what they live on. Still, Mega there Man are Zero. so many games and so many fans of Mega oh, Man. Oh, I was talking about X7. X7. X7 was pretty decent. To do a lot more and a lot better Mega Man games. He's it was good. That's so, no, I was talking to Will in the chat. 
he was uh, saying he liked that Mega Man game. I was asking which one. X7, yeah, I don't know. It, that well, didn't X, X7 look like it wasn't, uh, Mega Man for it wasn't 15, linear. 16 years now. It's a long time, but I still haven't had enough of him. He's a great character. I like I've always loved him, and I want to continue to keep making games with him in it. There's no reason to stop if you've got something good on your hands. As you can see, I have a lot of different uh, sketchbooks here, and this isn't all of them. Battle Network, yeah, Battle Network is good. Sigma. There's a lot of enemy characters that have gone unused, but the ideas do keep coming. So many books, so little time. Yo, <laughs> we'll check this shit out. Oh, that was that, uh, there's zero. Chill Penguin, right? 2G4. The person who probably taught me the most in the gaming industry about what it's like to make a game would probably have to be the Blue Bomber himself, Mega Man. He really is a large part of my life. Yo, what the hell is that? Some knockoff controller? G4. Just a couple minutes. G4, the only TV network dedicated to video games, delivers. Bro, that was a good like 15, 20 minute video. <laughs> like on this GameCube disc, right? Cheats. Strategy secrets and cheats for your favorite video games. And players. I need players. G4, TV for full gamers. motion if you video. Don't get G4, call your cable operator or satellite provider. It's insane. I remember when video games were for like nerds and shit. Now it's so mainstream, it's not even funny. Right. This is true. Uh, yeah. Alright. Well, I guess I'm about tapping out pretty soon. Alright, dude. It was good talking to you. Yeah, for sure. Uh, thanks for watching, guys. See you guys next time. Peace. Have a good one, man. That's a bet.